How we doing? Tobin here, back in the den, to share with you my 15 favorite synthetic brushes. It wasn't easy. Currently I have a total of 40 synthetics that I use. Narrowing it down to 10 ended up seemingly impossible. I almost thought I was going to have to do 20. And I probably should have done 20 because doing even just 15 wasn't easy. I love all these brushes and for different reasons. I've had others, I've gifted some of them because I like them so much, and others I've gotten rid of because, well, I didn't care for them for whatever one reason or another. A lot of brushes serve a lot of purposes. When it comes to mass produced brushes, I'll share the measurements. And when it comes to your um, small artisan, one of a kind brushes, I won't focus on the measurements of those as much just because if you decide that you want one from that artisan you will be able to make your own measurements so real quick just for everybody so that we know so that everyone knows what i'm talking about even though i may not know what i'm talking about three measurements that i'll be focusing in on today one is overall height the overall height of the brush refers to from the very tips of the tip to the very bottom of the bottom. So in between my fingers is the overall height. Another measurement that we'll be looking at is loft, loft height. Loft refers to the very tips of the brush to where the handle starts. So basically the length of the fibers or the length of the bristles that are exposed. That is the loft height. The other measurement that we'll be be talking about today will be knot diameter. The knot diameter refers to the measurement of the knot of the fibers as it enters into the handle. Just this very bottom part as it's going in the measurement all the way around. This is one of my favorite cheap brushes. In fact I have a few of them in different colors and yeah you bet I have green and yellow. So let's get this going, no particular order. Let's start with one of my favorite small artisans and one of my favorite handles. The ergonomics of this one from Sawdust Creation Studios. <laughs> the lens is over here. Ooh, hello. It has a silver fox knot. I absolutely love the Sovereign Fiber from Simpson. You find that in the Trollfogger, and I also believe that you can find that in the Simfix. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But I have several different Sovereign Fiber types, and the Silver Fox is very similar to that. I believe this knot, like most of Bobby's knots, this is a 26 millimeter knot. I have this knot and three different handles. This is the only handle that I put in this collection of my favorite 15. So that was just my first brush, my favorite 15, in no particular order, number two. Number two, this will be my first entry from Phoenix Shaving, or Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, and that's the Green Ray. One reason why I love it is because of the green and yellow, the University of Oregon, the Ducks, but also, this triple knot is extremely soft. It's great for travel and it fits really well in my hand. I like how I can grip it and just go to town with it. And it is super, super soft, like I've said in a previous video. Great splay. It's, it's a wonderful knot and a very ergonomic handle. All of PAA's, all of Phoenix Shavings brushes, retail for $19.95. This one included. The overall height on this is 107 millimeters. The loft is 57 millimeters. And the knot diameter is 24 millimeters. That's number two in my top 15. In no particular order, number three. My only synthetic knot from Smiles for Miles. I have several handles from Smiles, but I only have one synthetic. And that's also partially because it's a testament of his motorboat 
as titty knots. I love them. We'll get into that in another video. This brush, I have a rarer maker's, maker's coin, smiles for miles. This is recycled skateboard wood. This handle is freaking epic. I love it. Again, the ergonomics, it fits very well in my hand, just like the uh, Green Ray does. The knot is on the smaller side, but the handle is also on the smaller side as well. I don't know the exact measurements of it, but as you can see, it's roughly the same size as the Green Ray. This is number three. Smiles for Miles. Recycled skateboard wood. And I just think it's awesome to look at. It feels great in the hand. Smiles. Killing it with the skateboard wood. Number four. I have my one and only brush from Fine Accoutrements. One thing I love about this brush is that it's got that old school look to it. The shape of the handle. I like the colors on this one. I think they call this one crimson. I don't understand why. Um, I'm not very good at knowing my colors. My third grade math skills get in the way of that too. But I always thought crimson was like a shade, shade of red. This to me uh, is more of a shade of brown. But the biggest reason why it's in my countdown is because of the angel hair. That's what they call it. The angel hair fibers. It, like the green ray, is super super soft not a lot of backbone a little less than medium synthetic backboniness to it but it's so soft it's great for creams and cropes and it's just it's pillowy soft angel hair is a great name for it super super soft i got this from the wet shaving store and it retails at 26.99 Something else that's cool about the brushes that they have at the wet shaving store is they're doing custom made smiles for miles brushes. So you can go on there. I think it's three different handle types that you can choose from. And then there's a good selection of knots and colors. And that starts at $79.99. So you can go on the website and super easy make your own smiles for miles custom brush. And that's at the wet shaving store where I got this brush. Number five. For some reason, that just reminded me of the movie Short Circuit. Johnny Five is alive. Now I'm dating myself. But that's okay. I'm old. I'm not as old as dirt, but I'm getting there. Number five, no particular order, is my one and only brush from Rob Moffat. That is the son of Bobby Moffat, the same guy that made this brush. This is Daddy, and this is his son, Rob. And so that darn Rob was his first company. He is now under the chisel and hound. This is, he no longer sells synthetic knots, but when he first started out, he did have synthetics. And I grabbed this one from him. It's a good size handle if you compare it to some of the others that I recently showed you. I love the look of it though. You got like this metal shavings going on inside of it. The black on the ferrule, right? That's what you call it, it's sparkly. And it's got a giant knot. The knot is huge. Probably 30 or 32 diameter on the knot. I don't know for sure. So that's number five. We're a third of the way through the countdown. How are we doing? <laughs> Number six, I have a companion. She demanded to come in. So now she's stuck in here with me while we do. Number six, she's like stuck as hell. Let me out, man. Goodbye, Luna. Number six, my only synthetic from Erebus and Te Terror. John Kidd is the artisan. This brush is paddock with a black limba inlay. And other than a black synthetic knot, I don't have any other name for it. It's a small knot. 
but I just really love the old school look and feel to this handle and not it's like it came right off you know a ship from the 1600s or 1800s or something absolutely love this brush I think it is just gorgeous and it fits well in the hand I love it I like it I like it a lot let's go with my one and only vintage brush number seven with an original knot my only vintage brush in this countdown or in this stuff number seven from baja a lucite handle and the original nylon bristles now i have other nylon brushes out in the garage a lot of it depends on i think how well the brush has been taken care of or not taken care of my wife and i found this while we were antiquing in a city not far from here called Lebanon and we found this in the antique store and it was still not in the original box but they had it like in this little box that you could tell was super old my wife uses the box I should have brought it in here for this video but I really believe that these old nylon brushes get a bad rap most of the other ones that I've used were just okay but this, and this, you know, this doesn't live up to a lot of our modern knots. Okay, it's 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 not top of the line. But I really do think that it performs just as well as a lot of synthetic knots on the market today. Not quite as soft, but once you get this thing wet and load it up with lather, it will whip up a killer lather and is soft on the face. Right now, when it's dry, not so much. But if you can find a nylon knot that is in good shape. I invite you to give it a try before you rip it out and put something else in there or before you discard it as just being a, a nylon knot. I know a lot of guys out there have had bad experiences with them. And up until this one, I'd had bad experiences. I'd had mediocre experiences, but this nylon knot, this handle is epic. I love it. I will never take this knot out at any point whatsoever. I still use this. I'll continue to use it. All right. For number eight, let's talk about the Atomic Rocket. I love this brush. If you've seen my Phoenix shaving video, you know that I have three of them. I have two of them right here in these cases. This is one of the newer ones. If you buy them today, you'll get the, the black those other two have red ones. This is a large brush. The overall height is 127 millimeters. It's a big one. The loft is 63 millimeters and the knot diameter is 26. The Atomic Rocket, that's the suave knot. That's what they call it. It's a Poisson type, extremely soft. And this has a little less than medium background, right around medium. But it is so soft, not quite as soft as the angel hair, but I'd say it's a butt hair, not as soft. If you go to sleep, can't go to sleep, I'm only number eight. Again, that one retails for $19.95. The Phoenix brushes, for what you pay for them, probably the most bang for your buck. Number nine, the Omega Evo. I got it at West Coast Shaving and it was $70. Now they're up to about $84.90. West Coast was out, but I did find them at New England Shaving and they have five different handles. This has great water retention and great heat retention when it comes to a synthetic. That's one place that I still feel like synthetics fall short is water and heat retention. Your high-end badger still knocks the socks off of these synthetics synthetics are getting close this is not not quite there i love them don't get me wrong there's good there's pros and cons to all these fibers i can find good things to say about every fiber the overall height of this brush this is what they call the gray stone handle their overall height is 105 millimeters 
the loft is 50 millimeters and the knot is 28 millimeters. I love this brush, the ergonomics. Again, you know, a lot of these brushes made, made the cut because of the ergonomics. I think it is a few steps above the high brush. I had a high brush and I gave it away. I actually had a couple of them over the years. Um, I won't get rid of my Evo, not anytime soon though. I love this brush. Number nine. Almost home guys. Number 10, from Australia. George is the man behind the lathe and that's Billy Goat Brushworks. We got a Bobcat knot. This is amazing synthetic knot. I love the look of it. I love the feel of it. It has good heat and water retention. The backbone is right about the, mid, the, the middle of the road. The ergonomics are perfect. This is a big, beefy handle. You put it next to the Atomic Rocket and you'll see they're almost the exact same size. I have a couple of George's, George's brushes and I highly recommend checking him out on Etsy and on Instagram. My third and final brush in this top 15 from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements is the Peregrino. If you've seen my Phoenix shaving introduction, you know how I feel about the Roswell Gray and the brushes that follow it with the same fibers. This one is a large brush. We have a 131 millimeter total height, 56 on the loft, and 24 on the knot diameter. This guy is huge. It fits in my hand extremely well. And again, if we hold it up to the rocket, you can see it's just a little bit shorter. Similar girth on the bottom of the handle here. But dollar for dollar is of my opinion that the Roswell Gray is the best synthetic knot. On the market today it's not the best i've already talked about the omega evo and it, it does a better job of water retention but it's 80 dollars. i can buy four of these i have another brush i'm going to do next it has probably better fibers uh but it's another 80 dollar brush so for 19.95 from phoenix shaving the roswell gray and you can get this in a few different brushes. If you haven't, if you haven't seen my Phoenix shaving brush introduction video, I recommend checking it out. So, bang for buck, right? This next brush is absolutely one of my favorites, and I feel like, in my opinion, it comes the closest out of all the knots I've tried in the synthetic realm of getting anywhere close to a high-end badger type knot and that is the platinum fibers from Simpson however this brush is going to cost you around $80 this is the Duke 3 you can get it at the shave supply for $79.99 if you can afford it this would be probably the one brush that I'd suggest grabbing if you can afford it the overall height is 98 millimeters, the loft is 51, and the knot is 23. I don't even want to know how much a 26 millimeter knot would cost or a 28 millimeter knot. You do get what you pay for. Like I said, you know, not only do these things look real, they it feels real. It feels like a real badger knot. It really does. I love it. The heat and water retention comes close but it's still not as good. But when it comes to feel and the way it whips up a lather, this is this as close to the real thing as you're ever gonna get. But I truly believe, guys, gals, bang for your buck, this guy. You know, it's all about how much money you got to spend and how much you're willing to invest. If you don't have a lot of money to spend, my choice is the Roswell Gray. If you got money to spend, the Duke Platinum Fiber, or you know, you can get the Chubby. It comes in a whole bunch of different handles.
I don't think either one of them are expensive and I don't think either one of them are cheap. It's all about what it comes down to your personal preferences and how much disposable income you have and where you're at in your wet shaving collection. You know, if you're new to wet shaving, grab this guy. If you're on a budget, grab this guy. If you're not on a budget or you've been, you know, already have some of these other brushes, this is your next step. That would be, that's definitely, yeah. So with that being said, let's move along. My second brush from Bobby in this countdown, Sawdust Creations, my Tuxedo Knot. Absolutely love this handle. It is just gorgeous. The video is not going to do it any justice. Bobby's Tuxedo, like I've said in previous videos, is a step above any other tuxedo I've ever tried. I don't know where he's sourcing them from. I don't care to know, but Bobby is sourcing some great tuxedo knots. And as always, he's making beautiful, well-made handles. This is, you know, a little smaller than the Atomic Rocket, but not much. Gorgeous brush, gorgeous. Continuing down the line, number 14. The number 14 and number 15 kind of play in with one another. And that's how, kind of one of the reasons why I was talking about it. it was extremely difficult for me to do just 10. Because really what we have here is 14, 15, 16, and 17. How's that? So number 14, the T2. The Charles Fogger Synthetic T2, as it's known as because of the size. Sovereign fibers. This is what I was talking about a few minutes ago with the Silver Fox. I have other brushes that have the same style of knot in it. This knot has been highly replicated, duplicated, copied, whatever word you want to use for it. Imitation is the best form of flattery. And all these companies making brushes or knots rather similar to it is a testament to just how good of a job. Simpson did when they sourced this fiber knot. So number 14 would be this guy, but also number 14 would be the Roma Lupa or Wolf from Omega. It's virtually the exact same brush. Very, very similar. The fibers almost the same. I think the Lupa is packed a little bit more densely but the face feel, everything about it, this is a carbon copy clone, almost to the T as a Simpson. The T2 you can get at the Shave Supply for $22.95. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck here. You have overall 90, the loft is 44, and the knot is 24. The Roma, overall 91, Loft is 45, and the knot is 26. That is at TRC, the Razor Company, and you can score that for $26.99. When things get a little bit complicated, we're still kind of focusing on number 14, okay? So we have the Simpson T2, and we have the Chalfogger. <laughs> we have the Simfix. Also a Simpson brush. Really a Bullfix brush because Bullfix owns Simpson. We talked about that in previous videos. So Simfix is Simpson and Bullfix put into one word. I believe these are the same fibers. I've been trying to look all over the interweb. I even checked Simpson's page. I believe they're the same fibers, but packed more lightly, if you will. Have you guys tried both of these brushes? Do you own both? They're the same size, same handle. One is ivory, the other is ebony. I put all three of these at number 14. So number 15 is pretty much the same brush as number 14, except for what we have here is the ebony T3. Son of a bitch. The ebony T3. I regained my composure. The Ebony T3. Overall height on this bad boy is 100 
millimeters. Loft height is 50 and the knot is 26. Put it side by side with the T2. It's a little taller and a little thicker. It definitely fits into the, you know, the chubby, their world famous handle that has been around for years. It definitely fits into the chubby category. The knot is huge. Um, it's a lather hog. I love it though. Um, display is the same as the display on the T2. It's kind of hard for me to show you guys, but they both splay out to be the same size. Does it look the same? Because they are. I know it probably looks bigger, huh? Let's see if I switch sides. Displays the same though. I don't know how that's looking on my face, but they're virtually exactly the same. It's just thicker and denser than what the, the loft is actually just a little bit longer. So you have 44 on the loft here and 50 on the loft here. And then a 26 millimeter and a 24 millimeter. This was super hard guys. Um, way harder than I thought it was going to be. The Badger, oh gosh. I'm going to do a Badger one eventually. I put a little bit more thought into it than I did this one because I thought this was going to be easier than it was. I added brushes, I took brushes away and repeated that process a couple of times and then I just got lost in the mix. I hope this was useful or helpful in some degree. Did I say the T3, don't spend more than $35 on it. Uh, the Ebony, the only place I found it, and I hate recommending it, I tried finding it elsewhere. The only place I've been able to find the Ebony was on Amazon. If you know of another place other than Amazon, please put it in the comments below so that other people don't have to shop at Amazon. Um, I know shopping at Amazon is easy and convenient, but one of the reasons why I'm in this hobby is because I enjoy supporting small business. And Simpson is about as big and Omega is about as big as I ever want to go. But when it comes to shopping, I like to keep, even though I end up paying a dollar or two more, I prefer shopping with the smaller retailers like the Shave Supply, like the Razor Company, like the Wet Shaving Store, Razor Emporium, West Coast Shaving, New England Shaving. I would much rather spend a couple of dollars more buying something from them than I would giving that money to Amazon. Amazon has enough money. T3, number 15, no particular order. And the, the badger, I'm, I'm already done. Take care of yourself. It's the little big things. And until next time, thanks for watching.